Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I am your host, Head Honcho, Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of BNB, the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie, Chinedu, Armand Sadler, not here alone. The gang is here with me. What's poppin'? What's good, y'all? It's your girl, 2 Bs. What's good, y'all? You know, it's your boy, Will. All right. Gang is here. I love it. I love it. How, how y'all feeling? I'm tired. You know, I'll be outside every weekend. Every time mm. I come and record, I'm telling y'all about my weekend. But um, Chris Brown performed at the Barclays Center last night. I felt like a young girl. <laughs> That's why my voice is all hoarse, so don't mind me, y'all. <laughs> um, I went to a baby shower. You know? Yeah, the meatballs. I got there late as hell. Damn. I got there late as hell. Everyone was like, damn, girl, you missed the food. And they were Haitian, too. I missed oh, the black rice. Mm. Yeah. You and Guyanese. I missed, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I'm trying to forget about it. I'm but, sorry. Yeah. How about you, Will? How was your weekend? No, nah, my weekend was good. You know, um, got to go to a few birthday parties. A lot of friends I haven't seen in a long time. So it was tight. Um, and then, you know, today it was hot as hell. This week's about to be hot as hell. Yes. Uh, so, like it's just like I feel like the stress is like everybody's kind of like it's got a little bit more stress on them because it's about to be like 90 plus all week so mm-hmm. yeah but other than that it was a good weekend I love that I love that excellent well <clears throat> glad to have y'all back in studio glad to have you listeners back with us for season 5 make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel to see all visual episodes and YouTube shorts like comment share with a friend and of course if you just want to listen to the audio on your commute in the gym at work distract you from work I get it you can subscribe on your favorite audio platform share there leave a like there a comment whatever you can do on Apple Spotify Amazon Audio Mac, all those platforms, but um, you know, just um, to do what you got to do. Um, Patreon, of course, you can subscribe to. Yes, tap in. Patreon.com backslash Stay Busy Pod. We just put out a new Patreon episode where we have a uh, an in depth discussion about New York City transplants. Uh, I thought it was a very layered, uh, unique perspective, given we have a born and raised New Yorker, a New Yorker mm-hmm. who's been here for like ten years, myself, a uh, non-New Yorker who spends a lot of time in New York. And I feel like when we really got to the nitty gritty and had a very um, insightful conversation as opposed to the back and forths which happen on social media. Um, so make sure you guys tap into that, patreon.com backslash stay busy pod. Shout out to the team, of course. Kieran is not here in the building, so he's back to being the man that you cannot see, mm. but you can feel. Actually, you can't really see him anyways. But So he's still that, but he's not in the building with us. But <laughs> holding down remotely, Kieran. Uh, Siobhan, of course. Shout out to Siobhan. Much love for you, Siobhan. We miss you. Mm-hmm. We'll see you soon. And, of course, Zara in the building doing the damn thing. Uh, clip lady. Um, yes. You know what I'm saying? Timestamp lady. Uh, hashtag like all, all all of it. Just we we have a very We're building the monikers. Well rounded, versatile team. So. She's one of them. You feel me? I love it. I love it. So uh, let's get <laughs> jump into this. Whether you like real quick. So whether you like Mondays or Fridays off, hard shell tacos or soft, mm. a window seat or an aisle, and a smize or a smile. So do you prefer to have Mondays off or Fridays off, team? Mondays. Mondays. Mm. Yeah, because, yeah, Mondays. <laughs> I, th- yeah. I think I'm a Monday guy, too. I think I'm a Monday guy, too. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I got some really bad news today from my job. I still have a job. <laughs> so I was that's, like, that's oh, good. Our that's Monday good. got you, too. But I found out that starting after Labor Day, we got to go in four times a week to the office. Mm. That is horrible news. Right What's now. What's the reason? Mm. collaboration yeah. professional development yeah. mentorship <sighs> use of our great facilities hey the facilities are great like Tuesday through Thursday I love them I don't need them on a Monday though like I don't, I don't need that much so it's very annoying um, but I, I would rather have work from home on Fridays um, so my, my, my Sunday shenanigans are gonna have to be reduced to yeah. a degree because I gotta wake up to commute to the city Monday morning 
So, that's why I rather Mondays off because Sunday thing, fun yeah. day uh-huh. yeah. always going to fun night yep. yeah. then yep. fun morning yep. again yep. like it's, yeah. a, it's a lot. hangover recovery <laughs> Monday morning yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So. yeah I, I like that you mentioned that you're su- like because Sundays especially in New York City mm. active Sundays active. you might <sighs> you might find yourself might be the most lit day to be honest <sighs> that's yes. the thing like niggas love a Sunday day party bro Sunday, it gets crazy, my yeah. boy, in this city. The yeah, weather never is so know. perfect. Yeah, just... you never know what you might fall into on a Sunday here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah shit. So... If, if, if I wasn't at Father's Day dinner, I, I would have been at the layout in Brooklyn. It was in Brooklyn, right? The, the layout? Uh, did you hear that? I I I heard about that shit yesterday for okay. the first time. Must be some <laughs> transplant shit. <laughs> No offense, no offense. I'm just saying, I ain't never heard of that shit. <laughs> no. I, I didn't either until my boy sent me the link. I was like, oh, it seems cool. Like, I'll yeah. go. But then Father's Day dinner ended up being like four hours. So right. there's a lot it's of fathers that. today. A lot of fathers today that need this Monday off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, Where, shout out to the fathers, though. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel like fathers don't be getting love. Like, it was feeling real skimp. Like, yeah. I mean, it usually always does, yeah. but it was feeling real skimp. Yeah. Like, shout out to the dads yeah. doing the damn yeah. thing. Yeah. For real. Yeah, <laughs> you saw Dirk with all ten of his kids. I did, I did. Yeah. Nick Cannon said he was going to do the same, but we didn't see the proof. So. Nah, he, for, for, from his Instagram, I only saw him with like four of them, right? Because because I had to write an article about it for work. You know, <laughs> it was such investigative journalism here. <laughs> How did Nick Cannon spend his Father's Day? Um, Yo, Yo, that's crazy. is what it is. Uh, taco talk: hard shell tacos or soft? What's your, what's your, what's your preference? Uh, I don't like tacos. You don't like. Tacos. No, but if I had to choose, okay. I'll do so. Okay. All right. We'll have to we'll have to discuss your. That's kind of crazy. You're not yeah, liking whatever. tacos. Um, at, at a later date. That low key just threw me off. Yeah, I mean, that's um, that's that's weird yeah. vibes. I, I don't know. I usually get that response, but yeah, that's fuck weird it. vibes. It's a, I, I, yeah. Will, how about you, man? Um, soft. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm in shock right now, guys. Yeah, but, it's, it's. Um, a, I'm a soft. I'm a soft. You really don't hear that often. Yeah, that's that's like not liking pizza or something. Y- yeah. Like. No, I love pizza. See, fine. <sighs> I'm a New Yorker though, so. Okay. All right. But tacos. Eh. <laughs> I won't like. I just on Tuesdays. I don't be in the mood for that shit. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm. All right. Let's, just, let's, let's just move on. I'm a, <laughs> I, I'm a soft shell guy, but the the cheat code is getting the. Um, cheesy gordita crunch from Taco Bell that has the soft mm. wrapped around the hard joint with the cheese in between. Mm. Elite, elite. So okay. that's my joint. Um, when you flying on a plane, window seat or an aisle? Window seat, of course. Will see as at first, like as a kid, I feel like you know, growing up, yeah, you want the window seat. But the older I get, the taller I get. I really like the aisle, yeah. so I can like stick my leg. I understand I, that like, for you. Yeah, you feel me? Just like stick my leg out a little bit and this and that. But there's nothing wrong with the window seat's always perfect. The mm-hmm. stuff you it's just it's amazing. Yeah. One thing I don't like is when is when people be trying to look through your window mm-hmm. or like they be like trying to like they be like over your shoulder. Like, I'm like, damn, I'll lift it up. It's like relax. <laughs> like it's nah, I keep that shit down. We ain't seeing shit. Sleep. <laughs> Facts, that too. Like I go can control sleep. it. Facts. Yeah, go to sleep. Facts. Everybody go to sleep now. Like some kids. Like y'all go to sleep. I'm putting night, this down. Night. Right. It's over. <laughs> so I, I usually try to get the aisle just because if I need to use the bathroom, That's I it. can just get up without having to pass by anyone. Mm-hmm. But then it's annoying because of the people next to you gotta use the bathroom. You gotta get up anyways. And if it's a little kid, they gotta get up a lot. So that gets very annoying. Um, but you're the first person when the when they come down with the snacks and the drink, so that's cool. I be sleep when that shit happened. Mm. I was so mad. I missed my yeah, fucking cookies nah, when I went to Not Atlanta. me. Not me. I, I, and it's crazy too, because like I prefer to take super early morning flights, like six a.m. But I be like staying up the night before. Maybe I'll catch an hour sleep on the plane. But I usually be awake, like mm. ready. Mm. Um, I, I be out before I even take off. Yeah, yeah I nah. love to sleep on planes. Same. At least try to. But I, I do love a window seat for when it's time for me to sleep, though, because I could just lean against the wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that that's, that's when it's clutch. Mm-hmm. But yeah, having to deal with people like it's nothing better than when you get an aisle to yourself on a flight. <sighs> like, nothing better. Absolutely nothing. They better. don't. That shit hasn't happened since like 2020. Yeah, it's rare. It's rare. But when it does happen. It's a blessing. 2020 was crazy because it was like <clears throat> people great were times. Like, <laughs> people times. weren't flying, but if you did fly, it was halfway empty. And mm-hmm. It was just like was shit was lit. Shit. People yeah. were just having fun on planes. It was like a year. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good little time. Was lit. And last, most certainly, certainly not least, when you're taking a picture, are you smiling or are you smizing? I got to show the dimples. Okay. Okay. So, but sometimes I would smize though. Mm. Like if I'm like, 
real bent. Mm-hmm. You know, just and I'm trying not to get like the cute aesthetic, and I'm trying to like serve face. You know, being an adult, mm-hmm. I do a little smiles. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think I do both. Um, especially like if, if I'm taking pictures like my family and stuff, I try to smile. Right. Yeah, you as want, you should. Yeah, it's like you, want, <laughs> like you want your you want you want to like you know what I'm saying when you go to your granny's house, you want to see a picture of you smiling, not right. you like <laughs> like like me mugging like That's at your crazy. granny's house. Like what right. the hell? Like what was his problem that yeah. day? <clears throat> Um, it's but uh, case by case, yeah, it's just case scenario. by case. I don't know, man. Yeah, I need to take I, more pictures. Honestly, I, I've been my I, my eyes get super chinky when I smile too hard, so it it kind of annoys me because they look closed. <laughs> so I've, I've I've been trying to work on the like the serious face, maybe like a half smirk type thing. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Let me see. What? Let the, me like see. like see me smile normally. Yeah, like let me see what. The... <laughs> and what you've been working on? What you've been working on? Let me see the. Okay, okay. <laughs> Definitely a hundred plus likes. It was trash. <laughs> it's okay. Let's move on. <laughs> never lied to Taylor, Taylor Rooks. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Never lied. Never, never lied. lied. Uh, never let's lied. jump into this chat. So, first, Spotify has released their list predicting the songs of the summer. Let's run through the songs that would matter to us. So, well, actually, I, I really like this song. Billie Eilish, Birds of a Feather. If you haven't listened, really good song. Y'all should check it out. It slaps. Like I, I, I would never suggest some bullshit to y'all. It slaps, so I, I would suggest that. But we got Central C and Lil Baby band for band. We got uh, got the only for Flame and Nord. Yeah, and, uh, Chris I was like, there. okay, y'all ate that Shout one. Out to them. Shout out to them. Yeah, yeah, Glow Glorilla, not like us, Kendrick Lamar, of course. Uh, I had some help, Post Malone and Morgan Whalen, um, Espresso, Sabrina Carpenter, a bar song, Tipsy Shabuzi. Love Me JJ, Thames, Nasty by Tinashe, Million Dollar Baby, Tommy Richmond, and Jump, Tyler, Gunna, and Skilly Bang. Now, when this came out, I saw some comments about some songs that were left off. Um, I know one for me would be Get It Sexy, Sexy Red. I feel like that mm-hmm. one kind of came and almost lapped Yeglo Gorilla, which Yeglo is still doing his thing. Right. But Sexy Red, I feel like. Uh, that was get a different, sexy is agreed. That was a, a different song type of right hit. now. Yeah, agreed. Um, I think the 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 New York delegation would obviously say Fisher, Cash, Bay Swag, Ice Spice, or the original version uh, was an omission. Um, for sure, huh? For sure, for sure right? <laughs> and it, it was interesting seeing them put Central C, Little Baby Band for Band. Granted, it is picking up some steam. It's a really good song. I really like it. I don't know if it's it ever jumped out at me as a song of the summer candidate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if they're basing these off of their streams. Very possible. It's a streaming platform, so it wouldn't surprise me. But um, I feel like even with the regional aspect to it, I would put Fisher before Band for Band person. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was an interesting omission. But otherwise, I feel like with hip-hop, they mostly got it right. Hip-hop, soul-leaning type stuff. How about y'all? Yeah. Like I was, I wasn't mad at like the hip hop picks, but the band for band inclusion definitely made me question like, what's the criteria? Mm-hmm. I'm like, are they just putting songs that are like popular right now, yeah. or like actual songs of the summer? Because you know, like not like us, that one I expected Goes that one to be on the list, <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't, yeah, band for band, I don't know. Like I, I enjoy the TikTok trend right now, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Yeah. 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 For me, band for band, at first, it felt like a joke. Like, <laughs> not a joke, but like, like you said, like the TikTok trends and, you know, people were just, you know, yeah, it was like people were making fun of the accent and this and that, just going back and forth. <laughs> and, but now I feel like people are like, actually, I like this song. It's really good. It's actually, yeah, it's actually good. Um, yeah, there was some omissions. I don't know how, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know what the criteria is, but, Leaving off, I guess, New York's song of the summer, even if they don't think it's like a song of the summer, but leaving off New York's summer, song of the summer, to me is kind of crazy just because how influential, how big New York is. Um, but other than that, I feel like they got it right, man. Yeah. I feel like they got it right. I wasn't too mad about it. I don't, I don't give it. Yeah, I wasn't mad. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Right. This we all know what it's for. This, yeah, this wouldn't be anything for me to right. cause a ruckus over. So, mm-hmm. good job, Spotify. Not mm-hmm. bad. Not bad. <laughs> Let's move on to some new music. So first, I heard a cipher the other day on On the Radar. Shout out to Gabe. Um, the Phases Cipher, which featured uh, Iman Nunez, Tony E, Life of Tom, Fergie Baby, HD Ben Dope, and Dizzy Banco. 
And I played it, and I played it again, and I played it again, and then I went to the On The Radar page, and I looked at all the clips, and I had to drop comments on all those clips, because, like, that was, like, high-level rapping. And, you know, I think, you guys talked about it last week, the narrative around New York, the, the New York music scene, people feeling like Drill and Sexy Drill have taken over, which, which they have. But yeah. people feeling like there's a lack of real hip hop, lyrical rappers. And I'm like, well, look, sh- look at this. <laughs> Perfect time. And like, look at what we got. Like, mm-hmm. Fergie Baby's verse to me, mm. that one went viral on Twitter. Mm. Incredible. Just his like surgical breakdown of like growing up in Harlem. Like, we used to cop, uh, cop sour wheels okay with purple haze or whatever he said. And like, um, fucking our, our BB Simons was chains and. Um, project peep holes and just all this stuff. Even if I didn't experience it, he made it feel so palpable in the way that he really structured the story and in using the Buster Rhymes flow. Um, I love Tony E's verse as well. He was the first guy that went. Yeah, that was that was mm-hmm. the best one to me. Really mm. great flow, really great mm. delivery. So like, cool, calm, collected, great wordplay. Like o- overall, the the cipher I really enjoyed the most. But like, uh, I, I enjoyed it overall. But Tony E and Fergie Baby were the stand. Oh, and Nico Brim was in there too. Yeah, but um, Tony E and um, Fergie were the standout verses for me. How, how'd y'all feel about the cipher? Um, like, cause I feel like we all enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. So I just want to offer a different perspective while we're talking about it too. Like when I seen Dizzy Banco pull up, and I was just like, damn, like. I feel like he was supposed to have a moment as a producer mm. to push, like, the New York sound. Like, you see, like, what Cash Cobain's doing? Like, right. when him and Lola did the Don't Play With It, I feel like there was a momentum that they both could have, you know, banked on mm. by, like... I know he wanted to do the pivot to to be an artist, but I think if he would have just produced more for others, mm. New York would have just had, like, that like a balance of that rapidy rap sound to right. counter like the drill mm-hmm. wave that's going ra- on right now. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, other than that, they killed it. Um, you know, I'm New York as hell. So <laughs> I was like, all right, yeah. y'all doing y'all thing. And I'm familiar with like a lot of the people that I was there and yeah. know some of them. So it's fire. Yeah. yeah um, <clears throat> I loved it. Uh, especially Fergie's, uh, Fergie's, uh, verse. And like just living in Harlem this past decade of my life and knowing what he's kind of talking about for real, for real. And just like you said, it was like the way he described it was palpable and it, it was palpable to the point almost felt like a, it felt like a, I was listening to a memory I didn't have. Mm-hmm. It was like, a, it was like, you know what I'm saying? Like how you saw it was like, um, trying to go bitch, get bitches from Cardinal Hayes and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and doing all, like some of a high and like, bro. And then he was like, was on point. <laughs> bro, he was going crazy. I, uh, it was just like, it was, it was special. And I think people have to really realize that like, there's so much stuff outside the scope of the spotlight that, you know, people, people sometimes they, <sighs> They get jaded or get like, I don't know how they say it, but they get too focused on the on the spotlight and be like, well, there's nothing else out here and all y'all care about is this. No, we yeah. care about it all. Mm-hmm. You just are too focused on this. Like, like you said, you know, we have we have rappers like this, we have Dizzy, we have we you know what I'm saying? It's it 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 it's, it's special. I think um I just think people have to widen their scope a little bit and yeah. and and don't be turned off by by the rapidy stuff, because a lot of people like, you know, people love to make jokes about that type of yeah. music now. Like, scaring oh, hoes. oh yeah, yeah. scaring hoes, backpack rap, this and that, blah blah blah. <laughs> like, bro, fuck them. Yeah. Like, you know, if it sounds good, it sounds good. You, uh, I see you over there tapping your foot. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you, you know, it sounds good to you, uh, 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 some way. So, you know, I just think people have to just widen the scope a little bit. Yeah, yeah that shit was amazing yeah. to me. I mean, we're playing devil's advocate, though. Some of, of them course. songs do be pl- scaring the whole. They do, of course. Like, some of them just do be scaring you gotta, the whole. Yeah, bro. Though. It's a just a very of... blanket thing that I think doesn't. A lot of them don't do it account. like that. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of them don't do it how they just did it. Yeah. You feel me? Like, 100%. a lot of niggas know how to make words rhyme, but they don't mm-hmm. know how to make songs. Mm-hmm. Like, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the production is a huge problem, too. Like, we don't oh, yeah. really have, like, a lot of super producers out here who yeah. are, like, giving artist sounds like we don't have like dark childs and scott storches yeah. and timberlands like 
we don't. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we don't even got like real DJs. So it's like we gotta go back to the drawing board and like develop <laughs> everything from scratch, low key. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I remember there was a similar conversation within R and B. Like a lot of remember, unfortunately, Tory Lanez used to push this a lot. He was like, these older producers, older artists aren't investing into us or giving us the game. So we have to figure it out ourselves. And so a it's lot of true. us are trying to rap as R and B singers R and B singers and blend rap and R and B because I would love to work with a Brian Michael Cox, but I haven't worked with a Brian Michael Cox, or I, I can't work with a JD, stuff like that. So wow. there, there, there is that lack of, you know, generations kind of coming together. And every time they do, it's a big moment. Like when Pete Rock produces for someone, like people get hyped about that. Alchemist, yeah. like he's, he, he does a good job working with a lot of different rappers. So, you know, I'm not going to give him crap for it. But yeah, I mean, I think everyone new is trying to find their way. Yeah. And they, I feel like there's a lot of people who would be willing to be students, but. Sometimes the older generation just doesn't want to pass it along. So I, don't know. I know how that goes. I don't, yeah. I don't know if you guys saw, um, but I, I, this is one of the coolest things that's actually happened for Cash and just us in general. But um, Timberland gave him a shout out. Timberland, I, I, that I, I did shit see that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 he what? was like, "Yo, this guy Cash Cobain." Like it, it was just crazy to, to hear like Timberland say that. Mm-hmm. Like Timberland be showing mad love though. Yeah, yeah he he showed love to the youth. He ain't one of those like mm-hmm. he ain't talented. a hater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would love to see more of that. And I, I do agree with you about Dizzy. Like, I remember because he produced uh, Mood Swings, Pop Smoke. Obviously, he had Don't Play With Lola Brooke. Like, he's... like, I thought he was like on a moment. I thought he was about to like craft a sound, like be like the new, like, you know, yeah. Swiss Beats or like the new, just the new producer to come mm-hmm. out to like collab with a bunch of rappers, probably lock in with one, do mm-hmm. a project. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I thought that was going to be his path. And then. When he pivoted to be an artist, kind of threw me off, and yeah. I'm just like, all right. It 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 made sense to me just because I, I he he came up doing battle rap, so I, he always wanted to correct be be an artist. So I get it. Mm, I never knew that. So it's kind of just like he was primed to be one thing. He wanted to be, you know, something else, and I, I can't fault him for it. But, I get that. But 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 I I do agree with you. I do think that he was on that trajectory to be the next super prominent, and and he was prominent, but super prominent. Sound crafting producer in New York. Yeah. I actually saw him this weekend, so it's, it's all love, bro. Like, like this, this ain't nothing, you know. This ain't slander. Nah, nothing, the three shot was dope. Yeah. I just wish that, like, even like I feel like him and Lola probably could have worked together a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, yeah, because she's like, uh she's I feel like she's struggled a little bit right now. A Lola, a Lola, a, a, if you could, she if she dropped a tape like a Lola Dizzy tape, like mm-hmm. and that that's what Ooh. I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking Ooh, about. Call like, Lola Dizzy and just keep it and just run that's and just something like that. Yeah. You feel me? And just she is on that bitch just rapping her like her do- ass off. Because right now I see her trying to do the things yeah, like bro, with the 41 tough, and it's with the A her, Boogie. Bro. It's tough yeah. for her right now. And New York. It's tough for her. Like you said, everybody's only focused on hyper focused on one thing. And mm. it's like, nah, don't lose sight on. Oh, yeah, you your, can rap. Your, your, no, she can rap. You can like, rap, Lola. Can you rap. can make music. Like, yeah. Sit down. You can sit down. Yeah. If they sat down and just. Like develop like mm-hmm. like what we saying like we we got to get back to the drawing board like we got to lock in. Yeah. <laughs> Why you keep laughing when I say that? <laughs> because, no, I mean it's, it's so many it's so many niggas and so many artists that really have to get back to the drawing board. Yeah. And I tell people this all the time. Like I love sports and I and I love music too. And there's such a like and music and sports are such a copycat league. Everybody 100%. everybody just tries to do. What everybody else is doing, or everybody yeah. wants to, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody wants to, you know, oh, that's working for them. I, I can do that too, but I'm about to remix it a little yeah, bit and this and that. Better. And yeah. they're not going to realize I'm still, no, nah, nigga, everybody realize you're still doing what the yeah. other people are doing. Like, bro. And like, it's who are you fooling? when you're struggling and then you start doing, like, yeah. hopping on waves and be like, oh, yeah. you trying to find. It's you, even more obvious. Yeah, yeah it's even more obvious. Oh, you like, searching. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, Reaching. It's, it's not good. It's not good, <laughs> but. Yeah, definitely want to salute all seven guys in this cipher, of course, on the radar for doing these types of things. Like the cool type, like it was cool seeing them in suits. It kind of reminded me of that of, of the good music mm-hmm. cipher from twenty eleven. She was fire. Um, stuff like uh, Cash's uh, the the Slizzy experience that he did it's with all the girls in the room. Created. Um, it's just cool to see different types of content coming from these freestyle platforms. So yeah. shout out to Gabe and on the radar. Um, some more new music: Byron Messia, Lil Baby, and Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Choppa, Lil Baby jumping into his Afrobeats bag. I don't think this is the first time he's in an Afrobeat feature. Hold on, baby. This is not Afrobeats. <laughs> well, what is it? It's Dancehall. Did Barmer see his Dancehall? Yeah. yeah. Are you sure? 
positive. Oh, my bad. <laughs> well. Hold on, Zara, is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's just go on the Googler Schmoogler. Yeah, nah, I'm looking it up real quick just so I can be sure. Bye, because one yeah. time, this dude tried to bag me, right? At a, a rooftop party. Shit, though. Ahead, he tried to bag Ooh. me at a rooftop party, right? And then um, we was talking about, I was like, yeah, I only go to Caribbean events. And then he was like, oh, he said something. Like, I forgot what was his response, but he brought up Burner Boy. And I was like, you African-American? <laughs> and he oh, was no. like, yeah. And I was like, I could tell, hell boo, because no. we talking about dance hall, and you know this he the African giant. <laughs> like, you not even thinking about it. Like, that's Afrobeats. It's not dance hall. Holy but I understand, yeah. like, Holy the shit. experience. Because to, Taliban's to me sounded like an Afrobeats song. I don't know why. I don't know why either. <laughs> Especially when Burner Boy jumped on it. Like, I was like, oh. Nah, that was just that's what that's the joke. Like was, people be saying Burner Boy be trying to be like Jamaican or oh whatever. Oh my god. But no, that is one hundred percent dance hall, well, baby. That's why we have you here. Yeah, don't and, worry. We got representation oh, up and stay busy. Edit all that out anyways. <laughs> um <laughs> Byron is here, little baby Russian chopper. Um <laughs> Holy I know you're not the shit. biggest little baby fan, mm-hmm. or a fan at all, to be mm-hmm. honest. I, I saw you and Kojo mm-hmm. discussing mm-hmm. him a little bit on the timeline, so I want to go to you first. How'd you, how'd you feel about Chapa? All right. First and foremost, I feel like these dance hall and hip-hop collaborations are forced mm. and don't make sense. <laughs> like, 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 taking my <laughs> feelings about Le Bebe <laughs> out of the equation. Yo, what? Taking <laughs> that out the equation... I just feel like these collaborations just aren't making sense. Like 450 released like the Bud Gal remix with NLE Choppa. Now Byron Messiah did this collab with Lil Baby. Russian, he's having a moment. He was super popping when I was in high school with Vibes yeah. Cartel and stuff. So, and I know he looked like that too. So shout out to him. <laughs> but like, you know, he was having a moment or whatever. But I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like mm. You know, looking back at history, you know, history always repeats itself yeah. when the dance hall movement was explosive in the early 2000s. The collaborations just made more sense. Mm. Like Beanie Man and Maya, mm. even Elephant Man and Twister made more mm. sense. Like, it's just, for me, it just seems like a lot of people are just doing collaborations based on just who's popular yeah. or who can get them high streams. But it's not making sense to me. And yeah, you know how I feel about Le Bebe, so I don't even got to say nothing. <laughs> yeah, and I think it speaks to what we were talking about earlier is when someone is struggling, you can tell they're doing something to try to pick up steam again. Because both me, Byron and Le Bebe are struggling. Yeah, like I, I, I wasn't even thinking Jeez. of the, the Byron side, God. but Lil Baby to me hasn't been hot in years. Like I never thought he was. Does it see? Well, Everybody we know, we know, agree know. with me. I was like, <laughs> y'all are fake. And I know he's at what? home going through it. Y'all are so fickle because at least I was consistent. You were. Because he sounds like what he always sounded like. So for y'all to say I don't like it, I said, so what the hell did y'all like? So... The thing for me is he hit, he hit like a different level in 2020 for me. Like what I, was that? My turn. My turn. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like he he got better. I feel like he was jumping off mad features and smoking them all. But then from then onward, like to 2021 onward, he just plateaued. Like it was like, oh, this this is all you got. Like I, this I is all you have to though. offer. I knew that though. Right. I was not fooled. Well, he cannot trick me. So, salute mm. to you for having the foresight. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I agree. Like this, you, you see these names and you're just like. I, I guess it makes sense business wise, but do I need to hear a little baby on, on a dance hall record? Like, and no. then it was like a little sample in there. I couldn't remember, like the good vibes, good yeah. vibes. I'm like, you suck. Like, you're just not original. <laughs> it's just move, pack it up. Yeah. Um, like, I, I thought his verse was fine, but it's just like, I ain't playing that we, shit again. We, we don't need this. Like, it's not really needed. Like, and it'll be interesting to see what this does. Like, will it pick up steam? Will will it be nope. be playing out? <laughs> no, I, I, I highly doubt it. I, it's I, FET season. I've been to at least two Jamaican parties so far already. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Yeah. yeah, so that happened. Will, what you, about you, Will? <laughs> I- <laughs> um, yeah, I think y'all really just said everything. Like, Honestly, yeah, I don't. Really, I ate. You know, yeah, <laughs> I hate. To me, it was, like, to me, they said everything. You know, it was more just funny just to hear little baby. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, little baby definitely plateaued in in like two thousand. 
in twenty twenty. You know, and you know what really happened. What really took him to the next level when he was talking about. It's bigger than black and white and oh all that God. shit, like the yeah. George Floyd shit, like that shit. That, that shit was so fake. I know, but that, like, that was the I, beginning of the end. That yeah. was the beginning of the end. That was like <laughs> the stake in the ground, like, like the BLM, like, 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 like oh, little especially babies leaving the charge. Especially because he oh, said yeah, it's like, like all now. cops are it's bad or some shit. It was like, oh yeah, this is not the time. It was over after that. It was over after that. This is not the time to be saying cops aren't bad. It was over for that game. Yeah, unarmed black men getting shot. This is not the time for you to be defending cops. They had a little baby performing at the White House and crazy shit. Like it was just nuts shit. Everybody got Tupac too. Yeah. No. And they True. tried. They try to put him on that pedestal, and that that yeah. just that just ruined everything. That True. was just. It's my turn. Okay. <laughs> All right, little baby. All right. Little yeah. baby. Let's <laughs> move along from the small infant. Um, Don Tolliver new album, yeah, Hardstone on. Psycho, um, four disc album. Interesting decision to do that. I um, so broke too. it up into four songs per disc. So like it. I love you it. Know, love I think it. it creates that conversation of oh what's your favorite disc on the Don Tolliver album and it was also like different production per disc so mm-hmm. I wasn't too mad at it 16 songs total features from Kodak Black Cash Cobain Charlie Wilson of course Travis Scott twice uh, F- uh, Future Metro Boomin Tizo Touchdown how do we feel about Hardstone Psycho Don Tolliver always like he he has a formula that mm-hmm. works mm-hmm. for him and he sticks to it like I ain't mad at it um, it is kind of repetitive though but mm. I'm not mad at someone having a sound and them sounding like themselves. Right. So, you got any favorite songs? Um, no. <laughs> no Nothing stuck with you like that. No, <laughs> I already have attitude on repeat. Mm-hmm. Like, Great song. But I don't like saying when people ask me what's my favorite song, I don't like including singles. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, same here. Same that's why I said no. <laughs> that's always the most exciting part. Is like, all right, like especially when I like the singles, I'm like, all right. I'm going into this, right. kind of already expecting good stuff because I like the singles. What else you got? But right. I walked away from it like Glock, one of my favorite songs. New Drop, one of my favorite songs. Uh, Backstreets with Tizo Touchdown, like, and and then then on top of Attitude, Deep in the Water, Bandit. So pretty good, pretty good. Like I think with Don, something that's been like, I don't think people have been talking about it enough. It's been four years, no, five years. He's dropped four albums in five years. Like he gave us he- Heaven or Hell yeah. in twenty twenty. Life of Don in 2021, Love Sick last year, and he gave us Hearthstone Cycle this year. And he's been pretty present with features. And, That's you know, really some, someone like this who's on a run like this, normal, well, not normal people, but people would typically be like, yo, like, this nigga's next up. Like, he's a superstar, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like those same conversations aren't happening with Don. I feel like, and he's got like a loyal ass fan base. I saw him at Rolling Loud. His crowd was massive. They were rabid for him. Like, he, he's got a following, but there's, I feel like he hasn't hit that next threshold yet. Mm -hmm. So it's a really interesting case when he's been delivering at such a high clip. Um, Well, do you have any thoughts on that? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, You know, I think, I think Don is, um, I think Don is stamped now. Like, I think he's, like you said, he, he, his success is, it's been at a a steady, gradual rise Mm -hmm. with every drop. I feel like he's gotten better. I feel like he either comes away with a hit or two mm-hmm. off of his. Every time. And, 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 and that, I feel like that is a lot really important now, and nowadays in, in, in today's music, excuse me, in today's music is having a hit or two at least, or maybe three off a, off a project because how much music comes out, you got to make at least something, one, one to three stick for people because yeah. if you mm-hmm. don't, people don't give a fuck, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I think he's stamped. I think... He, I, he stamped to me in the music in the musical sense mm-hmm. and kind of in the star power sense i do see what i do see what you're saying where he is not in those conversations of being like yeah this guy should be you know next up but if you check his numbers check his spotify numbers check, he's streaming pretty damn well mm-hmm. i think maybe the conversation is you know how they say to get to to get to one to get to this to get to the next point it takes this, but to get to the next, like to the next level, it's gonna take some other shit. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe he's, maybe maybe he's maybe his star power or super. I think he's a star. Maybe he's not a superstar. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's that's the next. That's I don't the next even question. Think he a star, and he's ugly. <laughs> So also, I didn't know. Also, I didn't know he was that old. Too. I didn't know he was thirty years old, which is nothing wrong with that. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh. that's, that's young to me now that I'm about to turn twenty nine. Yeah, of course. Like, <laughs> I was like, Mind no, 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 of course. But like a lot of these people be a lot. Of, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these stars, a lot of people be age fishing too. A lot of people, yeah. a lot of these, a lot of these 
I'm about Artist to start beat. doing that but, shit. But, but I get it. Like I feel like if you heard Don's music, you would think he's like 24. 22 or yeah. like, yeah, 23 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or some shit. Like, he's yeah. like on some like young nigga shit, but mm-hmm. he's a yeah. little bit older. Just had a kid with the Kali yeah. like, you know. And he had a scandal attached to him, though. Uh, that, that did come out a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of went under the radar since then. Right. Very, um, very. But it was something when, when Life of Don dropped, I remember those mm-hmm. articles came out and everyone yeah. was like, yo, like. I think when him and Kelly announced their relationship, mm-hmm. that's yeah. when it came out. So. Yeah. He does look like a fish out of water. So I do. Yeah, he's ugly. I get, I get, I get that. Like, I just, yeah. <laughs> he's I, mad mm-hmm. ugly. Like, for real. How do y'all feel about the whole Western, like, bar, like, um, hard, like the Hearthstone psycho um, aesthetic? How do y'all feel about that? I thought it was cool. It I mean, happened. You think it's cool? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it's cool. I felt like it. The motorcycles and everything. and like It, the, it was fitting for the type of music he made. Like, mm-hmm. like you hear the singles and mm-hmm. it makes sense. And no. it, it, it all the makes times sense to me. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the music of, was, yeah. The music, the music he perfectly. makes is very alternate, all, all alternate type rap. So He's from Texas too. Yeah. So it's like. It makes sense to me. Yeah. Right. I like yeah. that too. And I love that all the Southern rappers who are like from Texas or like, you know, claiming their country roots, like they're doing the damn thing so I'm, yeah. I don't mind it like, yeah, I like that. even yeah, if it don't it. look traditional or how we expect it was actually, it to look yeah, yeah it was actually refreshing to see because a lot of rappers they really can't tap into they really don't tap into creating a world like that yeah. you know so it was it was tight to see a world created like that yeah, yeah. but I like aside from him being ugly I don't think like you said he has to do the next thing to get to the next level like we already got Kanye and Travis mm-hmm. Scott mm-hmm. like you really mm-hmm. gotta, you do gotta do something crazy, else yeah. like Russ mm-hmm. said in the interview like we've seen the best version of everything already and he ain't lying mm-hmm. like even going to we about to go to the Normani album mm-hmm. like I feel like right, it was cool mm-hmm. but I don't feel like there's anything on there that I haven't heard mm, before. It's not world breaking. Yeah, yeah, like the replay value isn't like that high to me. Like it's not a lot of things like I will go back to. It's like, yeah, this is cool, it was cute or whatever. But and I know that she was going through a lot, you know, on a business tip, personal tip. So I'm glad that it's out. Mm-hmm. Facts, me too. <laughs> yeah. I'm just happy. Yeah, I'm happy it's just out. Yeah. No, that's uh um... Thank God. It's a great transition, great point. Normani do- Dopamine came out this weekend. 13 songs, features from Stara, uh, Gunna, James Blake, Cardi B, that Cardi B song from 2021. Yo! Nah, let's talk about that. Is that song? So, here, here's my thing with Normani. For years, this debut album, this debut solo album was the thing. Niggas was waiting on it. They was waiting on it like detox. They was waiting on it like the Fact. J. Cole, Still Kendrick waiting. Lamar collab. Fact. They was waiting on it like all those highly anticipated projects. They're like, yo, when this drops, and this was the conversation since like 2018. And then 2021 comes, Wild Side is out. She drops a couple other singles. I'm just like, yo, maybe the star that y'all are expecting her to be or want her to be, she's just not that. She's not going to be that. And that's okay because I-, I liked her stuff, but I think People set such a high bar for her by hyping up this debut album and then it taking so long. It got to a point I, I was over it. I was like, yo, like, I don't I'm, care. I, 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 I don't care. I, I really don't care. Like, I think she's talented. I think she's going to be great. She's obviously beautiful. She seems very cool. Like, but as far as this, this album and the way y'all are hyping her up, like, I, I just don't think she's going to meet that. So then we get to this album and going through a lot of it, like, I, I think it's cool to see a, black pop star who is like leaning into the hip hop, leaning into the R and B stuff. Cause I'm, I'm trying to think like when's I think, well, obviously we have SZA, although she's more like R and B soul, like Neo alt. soul type yeah. stuff. Alt. And she just started rapping. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. Normani was, is really like, she's like cursing a lot. She's, she's rapping a lot. She's real like kind of swaggy like with that. it. Oh, you didn't like it? No, I mm. didn't like like the cussing and stuff. Like I feel like Beyonce waited like Beyonce for a long wait. time she to do wait. that. Yeah. And, I don't know. It's it's like a lot of blending and sampling mm-hmm. and paying homage so much that yeah. new artists don't have like identities. Like, you know, I I'm you know I get dragged for this all the time, but that's how I feel about Victoria Monet. Yeah, I mean, yes. Like, <clears throat> yes. don't get me wrong. I know her pen works, Elite, yeah. and that mic be on. Mm-hmm. That's what she should. But be doing. like in one video, Only. she's Beyonce. <laughs> The next video, she's Rihanna. The next video, she's Janet. The next video, she's Ciara. Who is Victoria? Mm. And I feel like a lot of artists are just getting caught up in that. And 
you know, that just goes back to what we were saying earlier about just not the not bridging that gap between mm. the generations and like yeah. being original and just crafting your own identity. Like, I don't and it's know. interesting because Normani's had so many years to develop. Like, like you know, <laughs> like the, the, there was stuff I saved on the album I liked. The start the opening song, Big Boy with Star, I liked All Yours, Lights On was cool, Insomnia was cool, the Gunna song was I right. still was all right to me. Uh still was cool. She sampled uh still still, she, still tipping, still tipping. Mm-hmm. and she quoted back then Mike Jones. Yeah. Um Tantrums with James Blake was cool, but James Blake is a cheat code. Like rappers <laughs> just be sprinkling <laughs> James Blake on their projects. As they should. Getting into the James Blake world. Like you can't really go wrong unless you really fuck a verse up. And she ain't fuck it up. So like the James Blake song was cool. But yeah, like I, I I was listening, hoping to be blown away. Yes. And I wasn't blown away. Like, again, I do like that she's taking on this hip hop R and B hybrid pop star type thing. But it also felt a little limited. Like I felt like coming from a group like Fifth Harmony, where they're doing all this different stuff, they had global appeal. Right. Like it's it's not bad that she's stepping into what she's stepping into, but I, I feel like she's capable. I, I I expected more. And you know, that's maybe my fault for having expectations. But it's a natural thing with I think, music. Yeah, bro. When you're waiting so long for this, especially. I think, yeah, bro. I think you uh <laughs> Yeah, bro. I think you fell I think you fell for the hype train. I mean, yeah, yeah. they were definitely talking about her and hyping Normani up like she was about to be like the LeBron James of fucking <laughs> women's R and B music. Like they the said hype. she's supposed to be the next Beyonce. Yeah, like the I mean that's like saying Literally, the next LeBron yeah. James. So like that's like yeah. So like the way they were talking about her and the way they was hyping it and this and that, I stopped caring. Probably after like the first year of the hype, like and it was just like I don't know. I just because I, I never listened to Fifth Harmony and none of that. So I was Me like either. I wasn't I really cared. like tapped in or like care. Like you know what I'm saying? I just didn't really. Exactly. Now, so but when I heard some racist shit was going on, I was like, "What?" Happened? Yeah, facts. What's Every, going I, on? I, I, after the only that, black girl, what? Yeah, mm-hmm. facts. Everybody did. <laughs> that. I was like, "What's Everybody going on?" Everybody was like, on? "So what's going on?" Yeah. So, <laughs> but that's a good point. I feel like a lot of people started rooting for her after that. Yeah, Hell and yeah. being she like, "Yeah, so like okay, like Hell yeah, yeah. she's about she to snap on, like, and this and that." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me a girl. Stranger with mm-hmm. Sam Smith. She had a couple of big features that like really hyped her up, and but I think for me it wasn't even the hype hype train. It was just. Being familiar with her talent, like yeah, I, I liked the stuff she put out. It just took she would drop a single and then disappear. People drop wanna, a single, disappear. D- d- she would do an interview, talk about the album, then disappear. Right. People want to like, talk bro. about. Well, she was going through personal stuff. She said right. in this recent right. album, and I do want to extend grace for oh, that. Like, I'm an Aquarius. When I'm emotional, <laughs> I really it affects everything. Mm. Like to be honest with you, when, when, yeah. you know, when people talk about industry plants and this and that. You know, this is the case that they need to like. These are the type of cases they need to be looking at. Wow. Wait, hold you on, know? Normani's an industry plant. Wow. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say like a like an industry yeah, plant. I'm not rolling. With no, that. no, no, no. <laughs> listen, 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 no, listen, no, listen, no, 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 no. A plant, uh, bro. Being an entry plant is not a bad thing. I think it's a great thing. That means you're so talented that that the industry literally like waits for you to craft your talent over this over these years because. They believe in it so much and believe, like you said, they said she's about to be the next Beyonce. So, you know, there's, there's artists like, who's the guy that was on, um, there's, there's a few, there's a few artists that literally like, I don't know how to say it. They, she came from fifth, uh, is it fifth harmony? Fifth harmony. She came from fifth harmony. You know, she knows she can sing. She has, she know she, can she? Yeah, well, you know, I'm talking about she's from singing. from the industry's perspective, like of her looking at her as her stardom. Mm-hmm. Right. She could do this. She could do that. Oh, she was in the group. Oh, you know, she's so over this time until now was when 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 did that really when did the hype really start for her? Like, was it 20, 19, 2019, 2019, 20, It's about like five years. Of of of, no, no, no. of of it being crafted and being ready yeah. to go, and now it's out, and the the disappointment of it a little bit is, I guess, kind of, is kind of telling, you know, to the to the to the point that maybe maybe she didn't maybe she didn't have it maybe yeah, and that's you know. that's the conclusion I reached a couple of years ago when, yeah because every like people were angry upset where is this album bro, where is this album it like, was hype bro. these singles these singles are good but where is the album I'm just like. Cause, but they were putting that star expectation mm-hmm. on her, um, and I'm just like, hey, 
Sometimes you gotta let a nigga grow into it to, to, to be a star. Like you put that on someone too prematurely, mm-hmm. you end up disappointed. This our first album. First, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she ain't put out nothing. We've been waiting for something. Yeah. Okay. It was just a bunch of singles, <laughs> a bunch of features. She ain't put nothing so out. maybe, so maybe the next one, maybe her, maybe the next one is you know be- better. I don't know, but. But I do want to call out how on the music business side, how they love putting them old ass singles on the project yeah. to get the streams up. Yeah. Like, like why else I didn't even have motion like that either? Like, no, it was a little. It had a little the um dance yeah. that Sean Bankhead did. Mm-hmm. It had like a TikTok moment, but you yeah. know Sean Bankhead, he's a cheat code as well. So, yeah, I I, I wasn't blown away. I got through it twice. No. Um, I I think there were some bright moments. I think there's some things that she can take into the next project and, you know, elevate. The songwriting didn't really impress me. Mm. Um, I thought her melodies, her runs, her blends of rap and singing were good, but, like, songwriting, nothing. There was no lines I listened to, like, oh. Right. Saying, oh, like, it no just. No standouts. Yeah, it was just, it was just music. It was, like, good music, but like you said, we've heard better versions of, of this everything. type of stuff before. Yeah. Um. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how, you know. I'm not too big on first week, but like given the anticipation for this, like I am going to be looking at the first week numbers and Facts. seeing the staying power and all that. But yeah, overall, I wasn't wasn't really too moved. I love the cover. The cover was the cover hard. was dope. Yeah, the cover was, I like the cover. Cover was fire. The cover was dope. But we don't get too many dope cover arts these days, yeah. so yeah. So I appreciate. I did. That. I did like that. So, yeah. um, you got some Cardi B news for us, right, Miss Two Bs? Yeah, Cardi performed at Coney Island. Um, <clears throat> Lions group. They like had. I forgot, I think it was for Memorial. She was originally supposed to perform and then they rescheduled it because mm. of the weather. Mm. She came out over the weekend and then she brought out Chef G and That's Sleepy fire. Hollow. Mm. That's fire. And I was just like, okay, you know, Cardi, I, I was just saying, like, she shines the best when she just sticks to her roots. Mm. Like, you know, she's a New Yorker and we know that was a political move that she did that in response to them getting removed from the... Summer Jam mm-hmm. lineup and mm-hmm. stuff. So mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, look at her playing Big Sis. That mm-hmm. was pretty dope. But I do hope that they had a conversation about <laughs> why what they did was, like, not cool. I, I, I was going to ask with them, too, like, how did you feel seeing them linking up with Trump and all that? I mean, listen, <laughs> I grew up, like, a few blocks away from where they're from. So um, I'm very familiar with, like, the character types mm-hmm. that come from my neighborhood and um like 50 wasn't lying when he said like a lot of black men feel connected to trump Mm -hmm. because he you know got the case now and um they all feel like he's responsible for giving them twelve (laughs) hundred dollars four years ago so So they want him back in office because they're claiming that they've been broke ever since and was (laughs) broke before then so they need the bigot back Mm -hmm. in office and you know i'm just like chef you ain't even get pardoned bro Mm -hmm. (laughs) like you ain't even get pardoned i don't even understand what it how it benefited you but i hope cardi because I know people like to say Cardi's not the right person, but I feel like she knows enough and could speak to them in a language that they can understand yeah. to like understand like why they should not have done that. So I hope that she did the real big sis thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting seeing people, especially at their age, linking up with Trump. Like Lil Wayne took a pick with Trump years ago, but it was like Lil Wayne's a bit older. We understand yeah, that. He's, he's a bit older. He's just, he's got a different way of looking at the world. Right. And like these rich people, when they get to a certain level, they're not even fully tapped in with like the problems of today and all that. So it was like, it really didn't shock me seeing Wayne with Trump. And Trump was embedded in the hip hop community that too. up until he Mac was in the Miller, office. Miller, all them was mentioning him in songs and all that. Like, like Trump was, Trump before he was a president, niggas actually like looked up loved to him. Them. Like they was like, yo, I want to be like Donald Trump. Yeah. Billionaire, the nigga who's on The Apprentice, yeah, saying you're fired, alone. all that. Like, yeah, like niggas actually looked up to Trump. It, it's a, it's wild to look back on. It was on weird. When you've, <laughs> when you've dealt with him as a president. But yeah, so like seeing younger rappers link up with him and like Kodak Kodak got pardoned so it, it made sense but so like, I get that but like niggas who like you said weren't even pardoned but ASAP like, Rocky ain't out here you know mm-hmm. like he said we got a free ASAP ASAP that shit yeah. was so funny no, I, that was actually, <laughs> I tried to laugh at what a lot of, a lot of what he says but that was actually kind of funny no he Trump was a <laughs> funny I'm sorry he used to have me weak a lot <laughs> uh, yeah yeah but um yeah definitely dope of Cardi to do 
Um, maybe they'll be on her <laughs> upcoming album because uh, I think it would be cool to see her work with. And she does work with New York artists, but I think her doing something with Chef and Sleepy, it's never she never never worked with them. Yeah, so that, that that'd yeah be they've cool. been going through their legal issues. So yeah. Cardi hasn't really had a chance to tap in with them, but yeah. I do think like. Like, they're my favorite set of Joe rappers out mm-hmm. of the New York scene, for sure. Yeah. So, we'll see if some music comes of that. But, let's get to this complex, funniest people on the internet mm-hmm. list. I'm not going to read every... It's 20 names. I'm not going to read everything. I'll, I'll read up some, some notable names. Number 19, Gilly Wallow. Um, we that got me off. Number 17, Vince Staples. Number 16, Cam and Mace. Pretty that low. That me off, too. Very, very, very low. Kind of surprised by that. Lou Ratchet, number 15. Kai Sinat, number 14. Uh, we got... Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Number 10 is... Sorry, my internet's tripping. 85 South. Number 9 is Malik B. I fuck with Malik. He's fucking funny as fuck. Uh, number 8 is Desi Banks. Desi Banks was not happy about being ranked number 8. He, he, was, he was up there hating. They were generous. Yeah. <laughs> Eight's not even bad, bro. Yeah, it's not generous. at all. Number 6, Funny Marco. Number 5, too. Theo Vaughn. Number 4, my dude Trey Rags. Number 3, Mark Phillips and RC, RDC World. Number 2, Ben Don. And number 1, Drewski. So, were there any omissions any egregious rankings who should be higher who should be lower what, what's what's your thoughts well you know the internet is all tailored based on our algorithm mm-hmm. right i don't see a lot of these motherfuckers on my feed and i ain't <laughs> clicking on they shit if i see them i ain't gonna lie because i know my type of humor and i'm more of like a drew ski mm-hmm. even if you know kai sanat type of humor you know but um, I did see a lot of people outraged. Like, um, there's this girl on TikTok named Michelle. She does, like, these skits. Um, I saw Ray Monte outraged as well. And it was interesting to see, like, you know, I know that like, they're funny to me, and mm-hmm. I would have put them on my list. But based on who was on the list, I see that they have people who have, like, more so built brands outside of the internet persona, except mm. for Trey Rags, which I wasn't mad at his inclusion. Though. Trey is funny as fuck He's to me. funny I love Trey. as hell. <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> like when he took that little break, I'm like, wait, well, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that, you know, it's just based on your sense of humor, mm. honestly, because some people just be like, like childish shit. Like, Funny mm. Marco is not funny to me. It's, it's, a, it's dry humor. It's like, which yeah, isn't I'm my particular dry. type of humor. Like, I've watched a couple of his, um, I think his show is called Open Thoughts. Like, I've watched a couple of his episodes. Like, mm-hmm. it's kind of whatever. It's, it's it's awkward. It's a little cringy sometimes. But, yes. It's yeah. It's like, what the hell? It's, yeah. That's why G Herbo and Southside misread it. Because that's how hood niggas do it. That's mm-hmm. that's how they banter. Yeah. But it, it looked like you were getting bullied mm-hmm. because the shit is just not funny. It's yeah. corny. Yeah. <laughs> that's why they didn't read it. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I guess <laughs> <laughs> for real though, you see a New York nigga go in the corner store. They playing with they playing with the act like that. Like yeah. they thinking it's all jokes and games. So yeah. that's how it was. But like, nah, yeah. that shit is just never funny <laughs> ever. <laughs> nah, I wasn't really mad at the list. I mean, the list was cool. Um, I seen I seen niggas was mad at Theo Vaughn, but Theo Vaughn's funny to me. Sometimes I don't know if I've, I've you gotta see the Alvon stuff. Bro, just, you gotta see when I don't he, pay attention. You gotta see when he said he bought he bought um he bought a uh, Cat Williams uh Christmas thing. He bought a Cat Williams Christmas toy from um from Michaels a few years back. Mm. And you know what the toy was? What was it? It was a black nutcracker, <laughs> and it was like it was so it was so funny, bro. It was like he was up there with Drewski, so him and Drewski was going back and forth. That. To me, Drewski, Drewski's really good. He he should be one. I I, I, I like yeah. I like Drewski's I like the uh, absolutely. I like um, I like Lou Ratchet. They said Lou Ratchet should be up there just for that video. Like that's your man. Yeah, that video. <laughs> that's like, your man. Like, he should be in the top ten just off that video alone. <laughs> yeah, he, um, he was pretty low. I think he was number fifteen. Yeah, there's some. I feel like yeah, he's number fifteen. He should have been. Higher. I feel like they should have left off people like eighty five South and like because eighty five. Oh, so weird. They're like legends to me. So or like, Gillian Wild. Yeah, like they're like they're like it's just like I feel like those are like I don't know. Like they're not trying to be funny. Yeah. Like this, and, yeah. Yeah. They're taking up space. Yeah, Gillian Wild. I feel like you should, they they could have left off for sure. 
I thought Cam and Mace could have been higher though. Like I feel yeah. like they like obviously Paul's culture has been pervasive throughout the last few decades, but I feel like they've made niggas like start reusing pause a lot more. A like, lot more. I feel like I've been getting All paused be childish, way yeah. more often than ever before the last couple of years. Yeah, like I'm 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 so much more pause conscious now. They like, changed it to that's, I mean, that's crazy too. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a new way to do it. Like oh, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And that's when you know like oh shit. Like yeah. damn. All them niggas love a pause. Yeah. They do, they do. So I feel like it could they they could have been hired just based off of the influence that they've had um with their sports talk show, which I, I gotta give them a lot of credit for making that as big as it is but um do yeah you, do I'll, y'all think do y'all think the ben the ben dude's funny i, I like ben the don skits I, I i don't know if he'd be numbered my number two yeah but he'd, he'd he'd be on the list i feel like i do like malik's too uh, the, the, malik the, is the, hilarious malik's funny to me i think he's funnier yeah. than ben um damn but i need to lighten up huh <laughs> ben, <laughs> nah, ben, ben's cool but how long has ben been doing skits i feel like this year there's a year he it's, really kind of took it's been off a few years like this year, I feel like his it was just like it just blew up. Like. I feel like it, it was those couple of Drake skits that. Really yeah, were. and and I'm, I'm I know he was working before then. Someone's mm-hmm. gonna be like, yo, he was doing it before Drake, but you know, you you get a Drake cosign, you get bigger. Like that's just that's just what it is. Um, and so I paid attention to him more as a result of that. Like he's funny, but he wouldn't be my number two. Did you all see Drewski and um? And Kevin Hart on Kai's stream. Oh yeah, their That's chemistry was kind of. It was amazing. They people say they need to get to do a movie together, in which I I I, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't mad. I wouldn't be mad to see that. They, yeah, they got they got some cool chemistry. It was yeah. like it was kind of like oh y'all funny together. Like, yeah, it it would be different in a scripted type course. thing. Mm-hmm. And so I think if that does happen, people should just prepare to maybe not be mm-hmm. as entertained as they were watching mm-hmm. the stream. But mm-hmm. it would probably still be a very funny movie. Mm-hmm. Nah, they so funny. I could see them like just improvising a lot. That's they would that, just keep the shit like, all right, that works. Mm-hmm. That that's what I would hope. Is like is <laughs> mm-hmm. is them obviously being scripted, but having the free reign yeah. to improvise and do you know off the cuff stuff. But yeah, yeah, those clips were fucking hilarious. The the dancing, the eating, FaceTime and Braun, like all that. Like it was. <laughs> It was just all great. It was. It was Who really knew great. Kevin Hart had that little body yadi? I was like, hold on now, like what the hell? <laughs> you didn't know he. Uh... <laughs> I didn't know he had that little body yadi. I was like, wait, crazy. <laughs> crazy. Oh my god, you're nuts. You're nuts. <laughs> you're crazy. Uh, let's talk about some sports a little bit. So our new sports segment, ladies and gentlemen, what do you do at work when it's lunchtime and you and your friends don't got to talk about? revenue and excel sheets and all that you talk sports <laughs> at your lunch break so the new sports segment will be called lunch break fire nba finals the dallas mavericks and the boston celtics the series is currently 3-1 the mavericks finally got a victory uh this past friday they beat the shit out of the celtics it was uh it was pretty nuts it was like by like the middle of quarter two you was like oh this is over like this is this game is over they were destroying them um blowout suck Parlay wise, you know, because the stars get taken out and then you don't hit your props. But as a guy who was hoping to see that the the Mavericks make this competitive and possibly almost win, I, I was very happy with it. Um, Will, how would you feel about Game Five? Game Five was good, man. Um, I mean, Game Four. It's game Four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess Game Five tonight. Game Five huh? tonight. Yeah, yeah. Game Four. Nice. Game Four was good, man. Um, it was cool. Uh, not cool, but it was nice or whatever to see Luca bounce back. Um, because you know that. That game before, he was doing a lot of complaining and this mm-hmm. and that, and people saying he was flopping and just doing doing a lot of nothingness that didn't help his team win. So um, it was good to to see them bounce back and kind of make this competitive. Um, it's it's three one, right? Three one, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So tonight it could end, or could tonight end, yeah. it could go back to Dallas. It could be, yeah. And if that happens. If that happen, if they win, it goes back to Dallas. I have a good, I I give them a good shot of winning that game in Dallas too, yeah. and maybe coming back three three mm-hmm. for a game seven, yeah. which they will lose terribly um, <laughs> to Boston in Boston. I'm sorry, but other than that, it would be nice to make it competitive. Yeah. Let me tell y'all, after our last convo, mm-hmm. I went on my FanDuel app. Right? Okay. <laughs> And I was like, all right, y'all said it's gonna be a sweep. Mm-hmm. But I felt like it wasn't gonna be. Okay. And okay. good thing I didn't put the bet in because it wasn't. <laughs> and I would have came here like, motherfuckers, y'all owe me. <laughs> but no, like, I need to know who to bet on tonight. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, I got shit uh, to pay for. Game starts in like 38 minutes. I mean, we, 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 we could do a parlay together on, on uh, 
Well, why not? Let's I would it, definitely. Let's do it. Let's, let's put a parlay. Be, together. Yeah. I would definitely bet on the Celtics. Let, let's put a parlay together. All right, right bet. let's do it. All right, let me log in. <laughs> this is gonna be funny as fuck. <laughs> right? I'm like, all right, let's do it. <sighs> and I barely even know how to use the app, so I had to fucking call my cousin on Facetime, scream, share, like, yo, which one to do? Because there's so many different options to put in. I'm like, whoa, this should get detailed. I see why. Yeah, let me know when you got your. Your app open. All right. <clears throat> I don't bet, guys. So it's all good, man. Um, nah. you can still help us. No, I will. Right? I'm just not. Gonna... Who you think is scoring thirty tonight? If if anyone will, Tatum. Tatum thirty. Why would they lock my account? <sighs> Wait, did, did they locked your account? Yeah, it's it it my security. It might be oh, both. It might yeah, they always doing that. Like, bitch. Right. I can see. Yeah, I can see Tatum scoring thirty. Tatum thirty. Bro. Okay. Maybe JB too. Can is, does can you can you bet both of them? Yeah, he didn't can they bet both did, for thirty? I don't know if they both can get thirty the same the same game. But, didn't they just do that though? Uh, they did that in game, the game before when they blew them out. Like they, they both had thirty. But if anybody, I would bet I would bet Tatum having thirty tonight. Yeah, I feel like this is a Tatum game too. All right, put it in and send me the screenshot. I got you. All right, all right. Because <laughs> I'm like, hold on. All right, so Tatum thirty. I'm gonna mm-hmm. go Luca. Three threes. I'm gonna go Tatum. Eight rebounds. I'm gonna go Kyrie. I'm gonna go all points for him. I'm gonna I'm gonna go like twenty twenty one point five for Kyrie. And I was about to say forty. No hell no. Just hell no. I was just kidding. I'm like, Relax. <laughs> Why you just look at me like that? I'm like for real. She said, "Nigga, what? Put that in? <laughs> nah." He's not, but like, mm, I could see something tonight, bro. I, I don't know. Tonight. I'm scared. Tonight, he, tonight, something might, something, for for the Mavericks to win tonight, somebody has to go insane. Yeah. Which, is, either, which is what they do. Yeah. I mean, it's either going to be Luka or Kyrie. I would bet Luka doing it, but I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, bro, if Luka and Kyrie do some like Brown and Kyrie shit. And, and, and it's what they're gonna have to do to win. Some like forty piece each type yeah. shit, like uh, you know, and that oh, might sad. happen not this game, but maybe <laughs> maybe they might these next games. Imagine that'll be the first thing that don't even go like nope. Imagine <laughs> he's out. So yeah, I, like, I, well. I I just said miss two bees in my parlay, but just so y'all are uh, up to speed, Tatum thirty points, Luka Doncic three uh, three threes, Jason Tatum eight rebounds, Kyrie twenty one and a half points, and Kyrie. Four assists. So if this shit hit, we gonna need a little Discord. You know what I'm saying? Stay busy. <laughs> but um, yeah, just to get back, like, I, you know, I, to get on your 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 Luca point, will like, I feel like regardless of this series results, he's gonna have to take a really long, hard look in the mirror. He's obviously been sensational offensively, and he's taken the Mavericks further than anyone would have expected them to go this year. Like, no one was predicting them to make the finals. Yeah, nobody. Like, those conversations didn't really start till the Thunder series. Facts. Like, even I was like, yo, can this team low-key sneak in? Like, granted, they, they would have had to see the Nuggets or the T-Wolves, but they beat the Wolves, as we saw. But Luka does not play defense. Like, he's been trying more, but he gets blown by a lot. He's got the highest blow-by rate. Um, he whines uh, after every foul. Um, he's He's got, like, he, he, he seems very entitled on the court. And it's like, bro, at the end of the day, you, you got to make a decision. Do, do you want to be a whiner or do you want to be a defender? He's definitely, he's definitely like, he's a jackass. He's a dick. Yeah. Like, and the okay. shit, you can see the way he like, be ta- like he be talking his shit yeah, too. Absolutely. Cause he's nice, obviously. Yeah. But the shit he be saying to some of these people is kind of like, bro. Oh my gosh. It's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. Mm. But, so yeah, he's going to have to take a really, really long, hard look in the mirror this off season, decide the player that he wants to be the leader he wants to be, you know, we know you can score 40. Mm-hmm. He's playing more with his team, which is nice to see PJ Washington, Derek Jones Jr. Lively. They've all been stepping up, but him being the engine behind the team, you have to, you have to set the tone offensively and defensively. And he hasn't done that for them. So it'll, if, if they can somehow pull it out and win this series, it'll be shocking. But with the way that he operates defensively, I don't know if it's going to happen. So we'll see what happens there. Um, lastly, in the lunch break, I want to touch on some WWE news briefly. Um, so, actually, I want to ask y'all, and we kind of talked about this earlier with Donald Trump. If one of your favorite rappers, favorite celebrities, favorite entertainers linked up with Donald Trump to do a podcast interview, how would you feel? Mm. 
Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess. Uh, Remember when Ice Cube tried to do that shit and how it worked out? So yeah. after that, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I might. I'm, I'm cautious with it because mm. he tried to get us some fucking answers and mm. really tried to like you know take action. Yeah. But um, honestly, let's get back to the days when like. Entertainers didn't even talk about politics mm. and religion and shit. Like, yeah. they're not equipped. Like, you're not, like, uh, we're listening to people who don't read. Yeah. <laughs> they don't read. Fact, yeah. Like, I don't care what you're saying. Uh, I don't care beyond, what you're talking about. Beyond listening to them, people are putting the pressure on them to stand for these things. Like, remember during the pandemic when everyone was like, yo, make a statement, make a statement. Why do you want fucking... Shaq to make a statement on <laughs> on on p- police shooting and granted Shaq used to be a cop so I guess you know but I like to get a pedicure and that's it yeah like I I, I don't need What's all these people who aren't informed Can you see his feet no I'll Google it yeah Shaq's feet are that bad <laughs> so crazy I've, I've fortunately never seen Shaq's feet look at my shit like, I thought he was talking he be about showing me. it what the He's fuck is going on <laughs> but um I brought that up because uh Logan Paul. Celebrity, I'm sure you all have heard of, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who's been wrestling for about two years now. Um, he went to, I believe it was the White House, and he linked up with Donald Trump and he had his championship in his hand. Now, I've always been very clear that, like, I like Logan Paul, the wrestling character. So I like his in ring work, his character work as a person. I don't really care for him. He's offended a lot of people. He did some fucked up shit in Japan, all that. So, like, <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. So, I'm like, I've never been like, yo, I love Logan Paul, the man, the, what he stands for, all that. But it's kind of hard to separate because he brought his championship with him and was representing the WWE while doing a podcast interview with Donald Trump. Um, so, it's, it's kind of just like, damn. Like, and he'd been really good about in the public eye, not wilding out not saying stupid shit not offending anyone like he just wrestled did really really well at that and kind of stayed quiet so but the other thing is dumb niggas have a proclivity to do dumb shit again even if they haven't done dumb shit okay. in a while <laughs> like that, that, that okay. dumb nigga is always within a dumb nigga oh it's my like God. That, 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 it's oh, very hard to shed shit. the dumb nigga within that is oh. crazy and so People were kind of bugging out about it. I was like, yo, I, I wasn't shocked. Even if he went two years without doing anything stupid, like, I wasn't shocked because dumb niggas is going to be dumb niggas. And for me, it was like, I'm glad that my fandom, and, and I'm just older and, you know, I'm good at being healthier about things I enjoy, where it's like, I can enjoy what you do in the ring and the mic work without being like, I love this person. I'm a fan of this person, all that. Um, and so I just wanted to touch on that because I think a lot of people can't separate those two things and it's immediately cancel them, cancel them. I'm just like, well, it's not the best look. Bring the title with him. Maybe he should lose it. He's had it for a while, anyways. But um, yeah, man, I think uh, I think people just need to do a better job of one, not putting their their morals or these standards on their entertainers. Because like someone like Logan Paul, he just he lives for the visibility. Like him getting an interview yeah. with Donald Trump is huge for him, and he's he's a white, rich white guy. Like <laughs> like well, what do we really expect? I was at just the end about to ask who's calling for the cancellation. Uh, well, I mean, I, I haven't seen anyone to say cancel him. It's just like these are oh. one of these situations oh, where okay. someone w- would get canceled if we didn't already know who he was and what he stands for. Like Logan mm-hmm. Paul is Logan Paul, a rich white guy who lives to do anything to go viral. Like it's, right. you know, it is what it is. And yeah, so I'm, I wasn't really shocked by it. But yeah, I just think, I think people need to like remember that with these entertainers. Like they do what they got to do for the bag, for the clicks for the whatever. Um, They're fried. Someone in, in his position. They're fried. Well, why wouldn't he turn down a Donald Trump interview? Yeah. Like, and even if people hate him for it. Yeah. The people who hate him are going to give him just as much visibility as the people who like him. Even if not more. Because niggas love to hate watch stuff. Love to talk about the stuff that they hate a lot. So. If so, Donald Trump hit you up right now and be like, yo, I want to interview a vibe. Clipped. Okay. It's not <laughs> no, <laughs> Fuck no. Fuck no. But that's me. I'm, I'm not Logan Paul. Um, let's jump into this board meeting for the week. I had a very interesting, um, thought a few months ago, and I I would love you all's perspective on this. So I was like sitting down, it had to be like March, maybe April. We just come off a few good music releases. And I was like, it's 2024. It's an election year. Huh? And then I thought about 2020 and all the good music we got in 2020. Mm -hmm. I was like, hmm election year Mm -hmm. i thought about 2016 every 2016 music goes without saying 
Beyonce Lemonade, Frank Ocean Blonde. You can go on and on with the releases. It's like, let it go. And I was like, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's that, tweet, there's that tweet. There's uh, that so Some niggas love 2016 more than they love their families. Like, <laughs> on God. On oh God, though. <laughs> and oh I was God, just going, though. I was going on and on with these four year intervals all the way back to, th- to 2000. And I was like, yo, I feel like every election year ends up being like a really good, if not legendary music year. But it's an interesting coincidence or connection because a lot of the music we get doesn't actually touch on anything political. (laughs) So what's the connection there, if not anything? So it's just a theory that I had and I've been trying to work through and I can't find any connection. Uh, One of my boys is like, yo, the music is so good to distract us from politics. So, so we vote wrong or something. I was like, yeah, mm. it's, it's a funny conspiracy theory. I don't think that's actually true, mm-hmm. but I wanted to bring it here. Cause we're the podcast to talk about something in depth in that way. Like one, did you guys notice that connection until I, until I brought it up and two, what, what connection do you think would there be to presidential elections coming up? Fire ass music coming out. They always happen at the same time. Well, I didn't notice it until you pointed it out. Mm, facts. But I also think it's a reach. Because <laughs> these artists are not, they're not, like, you know, it's a coincidence, yeah. for sure. Because mm-hmm. it's like, I, I don't, there's no connection mm-hmm. for me, in my opinion. Because yeah. it's like, these people don't give a fuck. They're not Tupac. <laughs> like, for real, they're not, they're just not. Beyonce be trying to do that shit. Yeah. But, they don't care. Mm-hmm. People are just trying to put out music at high volumes because we're in a streaming era. Yeah. But they don't give a fuck. They don't <laughs> read. They don't they ain't engaging in their local politics. Like, they're not doing things that, like, rappers used to do. Like, I watched the Run DMC documentary, and I'm just like, damn. All the, most of the rappers from the golden era were college educated. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Run is rapping about going to St. John's University. Like, even fucking Public Enemy, they're fucking college educated as well. It's like, these motherfuckers are using drugs Mm -hmm. heavily. They're not consciously thinking anything about the election. I don't even think most of them ever even voted. Do you think the labels might be? And this is me just, I guess, jumping into my conspiracy theorist bag a little bit. Do Mm -hmm. Do you think it's something that the labels might be? I'm glad you Um, brought that up. (laughs) Like kind of orchestrating. Yes. It's definitely a reason why young kids thought it was cool to look up to Lil Durk and Lil Baby. Mm. I don't like, all right, like taking how I feel about them out the equation. Like these, I don't think they're, you know, exemplary, well-rounded, educated black men to look up to, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. And I do think it's intentional, yes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they mm-hmm. dumb. <laughs> hmm. Well, your thoughts on... Wait, so we're talking about, you just said, like, good music comes out whenever election, like, every every time there's election year, you, yeah. you feel like we get every great music. Every time there's a presidential election year, we get great year, music. These years happen to be very notable, if not, Bordering on legendary years. I, yeah, I mean... And what's the connection? I think it might just be a coincidence, bro. And just mm-hmm. like a just like a cycle of... Four, I mean, because that... I mean, at that point, because you're talking about presidential election. Yeah. You're talking about the World Cup. You're talking about the Olympics. Mm-hmm. You're talking about... I mean, every four years... Like, that's why it hits. It's like a cultural... It's a cultural thing that happens four years that's really big in, like, sports, our lives. Like, yeah, it's pretty... And I don't know when it started. I don't know why we do things in four years like that. But <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's a yeah, it's a it's a interesting. But I think it's just a coincidence, bro. Mm-hmm. I just think it'd be next. You know, just be hit, and then you'd be like, yeah, you remember the World Cup, and you remember the Olympics, and we had this and that, and you remember this song, like boom. So and music ain't been that good. Since, yeah, I'm just like, like I'm just trying to think. Like yeah, I'm just trying to, like it hasn't been that good to say like every election year we get like good ass music well yeah i'm 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 mainly focused on 2020 and the four year increments prior to that cuz this yeah. year this year i mean obviously the and music and moments as well cuz like the drake kendrick beef it it, it 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 is what it is, but like it's that's the only thing on my brain. Right massive now. moment. Um, I feel you though about 2016 though. Isn't because yeah. you say like blonde it was blonde. Well, blonde lemonade. Lemonade. Seat at the table. Views. 
Birds in the Trap, Sing McKnight, uh, Anti Rihanna, Damn. J. Cole for your eyes only. I Holy literally remember shit. the person I was yeah. when these albums came yeah. out. Like Anti- as you're saying it. Ooh, it was it was a really insane year. Like we, All right, but after that, what good projects came out? Um in twenty sixteen? After twenty sixteen. You talking about twenty twenty. Oh, if yeah, if we're going in the four year yeah. increments. Wait, wait, let's go. Let's yeah, go. What good albums came out in twenty twenty? Okay, do twenty twenty, but I want to hear twenty twelve. I want to hear. I want to hear what twenty twelve has. Twenty twelve, we got right. Frank Ocean, Channel Orange, Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City, mm. Good Music, Cruel Summer, uh, Nicki Minaj, Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded, which was, you know, what it was. Um, those are all the the immediate ones that I got. Mm-hmm. Twenty twelve wasn't necessarily the strongest example that I had. Mm-hmm. Right, but and, from twenty sixteen on, those yeah. are like the strongest. Two thousand eight, even Eight Hundred Eight and Heartbreaks, Carter Three. <sighs> Damn. Adele 19, Beyonce, I Am, Sasha Fierce, now, Neo, Year the Gentleman. That yeah. year specifically, though, the Obama yeah, presidency. Obama yeah, yeah, yeah. My president is black. Yeah, like, that's yeah. when, you know, rappers were being intentional about yeah. shit. Like, they don't do shit like that no more. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, that shit is a coincidence. Like, yeah. <laughs> and even 2004, 2000, big years. 2004, you got uh, College Dropout, Confessions, Encore. Uh, Little Wayne's first to Carter. Shit, I was nine. Was that was that when Diddy was telling niggas to vote or die? Yes. Was. Yeah, vote or die. He's gonna yeah. vote, yes. blow up your yeah. niggas' car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The and then you see how you know hip hop was way more involved in politics mm-hmm. and trying to get young voters engaged. Yeah. And but they're just... a lot more on the ground with it, like compared to now, super. where on the ground. Sometimes, sometimes it can feel gimmicky. Like, it always so feels gimmicky. It's super yeah. gimmicky now. Yeah. Social media. It too. always does. Yeah. Like when Little Baby tried to do it, I was like. Yeah. You can see at the Boy. you can see when it says ad. Like, <laughs> like you know <laughs> no, it says bro. ad paid ad this and that. Like, bro, like who are you fooling, bro? Like Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This was just this was really like as soon as my mind made the connection, I just I had to dig deeper into it and bring it up to people. I'm just like, what what cause people like to speculate on what these labels are doing behind the scenes and make them seem like this big, big bad <laughs> evil force and Big brother or whatever, like all that. So <laughs> I'm like, so I'm like, what if they're like, yo, election year? Let's 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 get all our major releases out this year because we know like more eyes are gonna be on the internet than ever before. Um, and elections don't like the the all the campaigning and stuff that happens throughout the year. So, and elections happen typically October and November ish. So you could drop something earlier, have it pick up steam leading into the into the rest of the year, and maybe not be. Um, what's the word? Not be like drowned out by the politics stuff. So I don't know. It it, it was hard to let it go once I once I thought about it. <laughs> Niggas don't vote, son. That's also true. Niggas don't vote. They not thinking about that shit. That is also true. But um, okay. Well, of these years that we've talked about, and you can't say 2016. Mm-hmm. Which election year did your favorite favorite music come out in? If, if you need to be refreshed. I was about to say, I, I wasn't even old enough to give a fuck about politics. <laughs> 2008 up was until cool. like recently. Was 2008 the 808s and Heartbreaks? 2008 year? was 808. But I was going to say 08 too, yeah. just because Obama won. Yeah. yeah. Great, great time. Gotcha. I, yeah. remember, I remember church church that month was lit. You know, my, <laughs> my pastor was acting like, acting like he got elected. Like he know? Obama. <laughs> yeah, like they, they, they brought a TV crew into our church and he was. He, he was acting different. Like, he, Bro, that was like really wild. Now, I changed my MySpace song. So cheesy. It was crazy. Yeah. Nah, it was a time. Like, I remember watching it. Like, it is he going to win? And then when he won, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it was lit. shit. It was, and especially like being so young, like, you're not thinking about all of the. All of the political ramifications. It's just like for me to see a black person. This is a black. This was a nigga in the just business. cool as fuck. It was crazy. Now, we we really understood cool that thing. much, and that's all we needed to understand. It was that crazy, bro. Damn. And then I get older. Nuts. I take like AP Gov and all that. Like, yeah. I understand. Flex like, real quick. Yeah. I'm like, all right. Uh-huh. Like, so he doesn't have like power to do whatever he wants to do, <laughs> and he, and he's got to make up for the bullshit Bush did prior. So <laughs> his his first term was really just like bringing us back up to a decent I standard, bro. I can't and, lie, bro. I hate when people talk bad about Obama, bro. I can't lie to you. We call him a war criminal and shit. And I feel y'all. I feel y'all. But come on, bro. He has to be kind enough. <sighs> yeah, he, he he wasn't perfect. He Nobody's wasn't perfect. perfect though. Yeah. yeah. Like damn, he was, he was just yeah. a nigga in the in the, in the chair. Like, but like yeah. you said, he brought it back up to a standard, and then <laughs> Trump benefited off of that, and that's yeah. why all these black men think that he did all these good things for them. Yeah. Oh, we're fucked. <sighs> <laughs> pray, pray, pray for the black community, y'all. Gosh. <laughs> pray for, pray for us, because yeah, just... no, I, I do be having a lot of conversation. And granted, 
the 2020 election was really us picking the lesser of two evils. Like to me, Joe Biden had the easiest job in the world. That's why he went on the breakfast club and said, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Because he knew that. Yeah. Gangsta. He all he had to do he was show that. up. Gangsta. All he had to do was show up. Literally. And he would have won. But he said so much bullshit leading up to that election where it's just like niggas was actually thinking, like, like, yo, should we vote for Trump again? Like, you know, all that. pulling up the archives, like, oh, you is a yeah. a purebred racist. Like, yeah. you is real to this shit. Yeah. And then Biden wins, and there's the excitement. But it was but for me, it was always he's a lesser of two evils. Like, I don't think he's gonna be perfect. He didn't run a good campaign. But it was anyone but Trump. And then you see the bullshit Biden's done over, over the last four years. It's made it difficult for those conversations I was having in 2020 where I was like, bro, absolutely not Trump. Like, Biden. Like, people <laughs> feel empowered to be like, well, look at what Biden... Biden ain't done shit. Like, well, we why, why will we vote for him? Like, at least Trump gave us money. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? 1200. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like, niggas really like, clinging to that stimmy. how long you spent that shit? Yeah. The fuck? That's not even my rent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so I'm this this election cycle is going to be very, very. I'm not excited for it. Me either. I'm, I don't know what to do because I don't want to vote. Yeah, and Trump d- Trump ass got got convicted on all counts too. So first of all, from since he was talking about grabbing bitches in the pussy, yeah, I was done. Sicko. <laughs> that's a wild he's, boy. He's, but he's, he's, he's been a sicko. It's a wild. That's a wild boy. I remember yeah. when Michael Cohen came to Charlemagne's show when mm-hmm. I was a social producer and I um, had him do a creative tune in with the Mm-mm, get somebody else to do it and I put the <laughs> caption like when Trump asked you to move some documents to his mar a <laughs> property and he said Mm-mm, get somebody else to do it <laughs> he loved that shit like that shit got him mad brownie points in the black community he actually texted me and was like can you send me that <laughs> <laughs> how, how do y'all feel about the um the way people hold political albums to a high standard and like for example with that apple music list the like one of the criteria was <clears throat> the album has a narrative or a concept or a through line it's not just a collection of hits like how do you feel when people make those albums seem superior to an album that is just really good music like for me it's kind of annoying personally yeah. I feel like it's rooted yeah. in racism. Mm. The same more. Yeah, like that's like who is saying that? Because I know ain't nobody from the hood is holding that. Yeah, it's holding usually that to the, it's usually who just, is the person who said that? It's usually nerdy white, and they be like, "This is real hip hop." Talking mm-hmm. voices, the ones who be at yeah, all like the heads. ASAP shows and the festivals <laughs> and shit. Like, yeah, yeah. like uh uh-uh. uh, yeah. Mm-mm. They gonna tell me what's hot? Okay. Yeah, yeah. like you ain't never. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget being in college and a white person telling me Kendrick was more hip hop than Drake. And I was just like, "Yo, stop talking to me! <laughs> like, like, stop talking to and me!" And that's bro. that shit Drake was talking about, like your mm-hmm. fan base. Like, yeah. listen, we mm-hmm. could, we ain't even got to get into that mm-hmm. shit again. Watch yeah, the yeah. Patreon yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was just an example, but it's like people do that with a lot of these rappers. Like, I, like I'll put out my my favorite rappers list, and someone will be like, "You don't have this person on here, that person." I'm like, "Yo, nah. I'm glad you like that conscious music." I, it's great that you think it's better than niggas who could just rap well and right. don't speak to <laughs> right. what you want them to speak to. But that's not how I look at music. Like I really just ask, yo, what sounds better to me? Seriously. And I, I don't need a concept. I don't need this double entendre, triple whatever. Like I, I don't need all that. Is, is, <laughs> do I want to bump the shit or not? Period. And that or is not. just like, mm. I mean, I know Drake got dragged for that you trying to rap like you trying to free the slaves. slaves but that shit was funny to me because it it's true yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's a very like snooty type conversation like, yeah it's, it's and salute to the people who do that like salute to you for for speaking to something salute to you for finding ways to make your messaging your political messaging your socioeconomic messaging palatable through music and it appealing to who it appeals to but I just hate that people do that highbrow. Yeah. Nah, this is automatically better. Yeah. Because there's a message to it. That's some recording academy bullshit. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I said it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're not wrong. Mm-hmm. No. Not wrong at all. You're not wrong. Okay. Well, I'm just going to throw my theory into the trash then. Um, but listeners, <laughs> if y'all do have any thoughts on the connection between presidential election years and good music, <laughs> that comes out that year or great music or even legendary years from music. 
Um, if you thought about the theory before I mentioned it, if you ever saw a connection between that, what you think might um, be connected to that? I'm all ears. I would love to hear it because as much as I say I'm going to let it go, I don't think I'm going to be able to let it go. I feel like there's something more to it. Oh we're going to spend the block. We are. <laughs> we, we're going to spend the block on that. This is another episode of Stay Busy with Armand Sather. So like I said, uh, check out the Patreon for our recent episode on transplants. Check out the episode talking about <laughs> the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef. Let us know if you um, have any thoughts on the connection between presidential elections and good music. And of course, next week is going to be a big episode. We will be recording the day before my birthday. So I will be in here. I'll be in here acting a motherfucking fool. Yes, lady. Do you like cake, Armand? I do like cake. What's your favorite flavor? Um, I'm I'm not too picky with cake. Like, okay. if it's just so like you, a, you like cake. I do like cake. Right. Yeah. If Say it's that. Like, like, I mean, red velvet <laughs> might be my favorite. That's the classic. Red, red velvet yeah, can't go wrong gets the that. job done. But um, hey, I, I I'd be appreciative of anything. It'd be Say very that. nice. But yeah, we we gonna be in here having a blast. So until then, of course, for myself, for Miss Two Bs, for Will, for the gang. We want you to stay safe, stay humble, and of course, stay busy.